Akira Toriyama has passed. If y'all don't know who Akira Toriyama is, you're not an anime fan. He is one of the godfathers of anime. That's Akira fact. Toriyama made Dragon Ball the series. Yeah. And Dragon Ball is one of the biggest animes that's ever existed. I honestly think that we didn't appreciate him enough while he was here. It's over 9,000! Yo, what's up, guys? It's Keeping an Eye Thousand. Welcome to episode 152. Yes, sir. On today's episode, sadly, we had to talk about the worst tragedy in anime history, the death of Akira Toriyama. So please chime into that. We also talked about on our otaku history's biggest bad villains. We had to defend them. So me and Kev had to defend some of the worst. This conversation was crazy, not gonna lie. Some crazy things were said on both sides. Bro, it was so wild. Keep it in 9,000. We are back. It's we're, we're glad to be here. We here, baby. What is up, y'all? How you doing? We are finally back. Yes, sir. This is Keeping It 9,000, New York's anime podcast. This is Otaku with my... Bro, Taku. Shonen with my... Bronin. Anime conversations from a NYC... P O. V? V? V. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not so, on the screen. It's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute. We still getting back into this, y'all, but let's just introduce who we got over here. Yo, so we got Kev on the mic over here. I'm right next to one of my best friends, Jay Quell. Um, just to let you know a little about, about myself for those who are listening to Keeping It 9000 for the first, for the very first time. Tell them about yourself. I am a big Shonen fan. I've been on Shonen since... I was a jit, as they would say. Mm. Yo, since I was a young kid, it's all about shonen, and that's what it stayed today. Um, every once in a while, I'll branch off into like a couple of other different animes, but it's mainly shonen for me. Top anime ever is Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho is the GOAT. Yusuke is my GOAT. Shout out to Togashi. GOAT. And one thing I'm watching right now is One Piece. I'm on the Whole Cake Island arc. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot to watch. The pacing is trash, but we move in because the story is great. What about you, Jay? What's good, guys? Uh, my name is Jay Quell. You can call me Jay, a.k.a. Uh, Spoiler Center, a.k.a. Jay Queasy Stacks 2 Wavy. I love slice of life anime. I love shonen anime, and I love anime movies. Uh, we're talking slice of life anime. I love everything. I think it just relates to the anime movies. You know, your name, uh, 1,000 centimeters per second, things like that. Facts, uh, facts. We're talking shonen, bro, Naruto. I'm currently in love with the universe of Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, that is my personal brand. And facts. then uh, anime movies, bro, Satoshi Kon, Mamoru Hosuda, and, um, you know, Ghibli. I love I love Miyazaki, so check in with me if you're trying to get right with that type of stuff. And who we got behind? Yo, behind the camera. Who we got behind the camera? I'm usually behind the cam. A kill. Gege is my goat. I'm the. I'm well known for being an Attack on Titan hater. And right now I'm watching Shit. Soul Leveling, Free Ren, and reading JJK every week. They're on Wednesdays for the spoilers, yes, or I guess sir. leaks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, those JJK manga leaks and spoilers bro like i told y'all earlier <laughs> son i am watching the videos on wednesday catching the actual spoilers on thursday and then rereading it on shonen jump on sunday That's jjk's ridiculous. going crazy if you're on it get on it and if you're not you're bugging and just so jquell let these people know how to find us yo so if you guys are hip to keeping an eye thousand and you want to follow follow us along on our journey you can subscribe to our youtube channel at keeping it nine thousand you can follow us on instagram we drop clips on instagram every day almost so please chime into that and of course we have a place where you guys can go and that is our discord you guys can talk amongst each other you can you know fall in love with new anime together and you can just like you know be homies so join our discord and join the keeping the nine thousand community that's the best way to follow us major facts yo so let's get into it it's a sad 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 week this week because we've lost one of the biggest inspirations of i'm sure everyone's anime career slash anime journey akira toriyama has passed he was only 60 years eight years old and he recently passed actually on march 1st due to a blood clot in his brain and it hit the whole world by surprise bro like we're hearing the craziest things like mexico stopping gang violence for a week for or something Toriyama. i think i heard that it was cap but like i'm hearing articles about that and also just hearing like and seeing the amount of people who are reacting to this bro yeah. so what we wanted to do real quick for our little um section of the episode is just talk about akira toriyama and his impact on us his impact on the culture and his impact as just a person as a whole um and you know just get into a quick little conversation about it so just to kick it off a little bit 
if y'all don't know who Akira Toriyama is, you're not an anime fan. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, if yeah. you don't know who Akira Toriyama is, that is you the don't one watch anime. You should know Akira Toriyama. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying you have to know everybody, but you should know Akira, yeah, bro. He, he is one of the godfathers of anime. Like, yeah. It's like being like, oh, I listen to hip hop. And then you go, who's Jay-Z? Like, yeah. you don't listen to hip hop. You don't know who Easy e is? You don't listen to hip hop. I feel like you could get away with not knowing who Easy e is. <laughs> I don't know, man. Bro, pretty impactful. Easy e is like the dude who made Bobo Bobo Bo of hip hop. <laughs> but we can move on. <laughs> yeah, this ain't a hip hop podcast. I could go, I could go on, bro. Yeah, but Akira Toriyama nice. made Dragon Ball the series. Made Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Dra he didn't make Dragon Ball GT, but I think he helped a little bit with it. Yeah, he was a part uh -huh. of the character design actually. Yes, so sir. people saying you know Super Saiyan Four, this, that, and the third. He was a part of that. You know, he 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 green lighted it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It just wasn't canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's that's facts. But Akira Toriyama, as J. Cole just said, he was a creator of Dragon Ball. Yeah. And Dragon Ball is one of the biggest animes that's ever existed. Ever. There's very few anime that you could say actually made it bigger than Dragon Ball. One piece now, you could say, just because it surpassed it in like by different metrics, such as like manga sales and whatnot but dragon ball has influenced our culture in so many different facets bro yeah. we, first we had the manga we had the manga. then we had the anime mm. then we had the the sequels that came after it sequels movies movies video, video games. games merch, merch. <laughs> live action movies music. we don't talk about that but music like everything like 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 people don't realize how powerful akira toriyama is and that's just guys that's just one of his brands yeah. bro didn't just make dragon ball he had a, plenty of other series mm -hmm. he had vi he had an impact on video games so if you're a big like square enix gamer like he his uh dragon quest and uh blue dragon mm -hmm. and uh there's one more i'm forgetting the name of it right now but those were major games for the square enix uh like like, like brand mm -hmm. uh like team and like it, like you know what i'm saying like he went hard like his art direction as an artist spanned across different mediums like he, and he, nice. he was influencing so many people oda kishimoto mm -hmm. all your goats this is their this goat. is their goal <laughs> this is their goal <laughs> you feel facts. me like bro's been in the game for that long yeah. like that's so crazy like that's like you know homie homie saying like yo i i was a child listening to it like you know what I'm saying? like he's been there yeah he's been there and it wasn't even dragon ball that started the inspiration e either it was his earlier series that yeah. also had an impact on the anime world the anime like community 100 percent. i'd say like he definitely made moves with his earlier series like he had a series called dr slump mm -hmm. but dragon ball was definitely like his magnum opus you oh feel yeah me? for sure it was definitely his top tier where he like just broke the boundaries yeah because think about it we've been watching anime since like the late 90s early 2000s yeah. when we were watching anime when we were children we weren't considering it anime yeah, it's cartoons it was just cartoons but while that while that was like our mindset what was actually happening was that there was a culture of something that originated in Japan that was just spreading throughout the West like a virus. Yeah. And Akira Toriyama is like one of the people who are mainly responsible for that. Without Dragon Ball and without, without Dragon Ball Z, anime would not be how as popular as it is right now. Oh, yeah. If it wasn't for him. Like, I, you don't get here without him. I agree. I don't think that people would have been translating anime heavy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, Dragon Ball Z was syndicated in multiple countries. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, like I saw Dragon Ball Z in Spanish, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy, bro. Like, bro, Dragon Ball Z got so popular and Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super got so popular that the Mexican government had to, like, make deals with Japan about streaming it to vast amounts of people. Like, I forget which city in Mexico, but apparently there was a point where, like, Japan was like, yo, y'all doing too much. Like, the embassy got involved. Yeah. <laughs> the Japan embassy in Mexico got involved. It was like, y'all doing a little too much with um, Dragon Ball, and we ain't seen any cash for this. And so Mexico, that city had that city in Mexico had to strike a deal with Japan to be able to stream, like, I think it was the um, Ultra Instinct episode. I think they had a strike a deal with japan to stream the ultra instinct episode not, in a stadium in japan for like tens of thousands of people not japan game banging on a, <laughs> on, a on a series on an ip Son, they're they're like, like, oh, you gotta check in real quick <laughs> what you talking about that's a fact nah and that's all because of akira toriyama just the influence to be able to make stuff like that happen mm. think about it it's one dude he drew some stuff on a piece of paper and it became one of the biggest cultural iconic influences in the world. Yes. Son. Nah, it's crazy, bro. It's so crazy. It's like, you know, the impact on the West was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But dude, like, even like the impact on like 
anime as a medium. Like, as we know, Dragon Ball had probably created most of the popular anime tropes Bats. that we all know. The power-ups, the screaming, transformations. Um, You know, I mean, arguably Shonen is going from, you know, young man to adult. Mm -hmm. But we have never seen a Shonen series follow a character from legit fresh out the womb <laughs> to dying multiple times bro. fresh out the spaceship bro <laughs> like it was crazy bro was a grain of rice in uh his pops was a bardock's nuts mm. <laughs> before anything that you feel me like 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 he went there and he continued to go there with the series and that was so inspirational because i don't really think a lot of series were looking for time skips mm -hmm. no one was like i would love to see fucking saint Seiya in 30 years yeah. as an old man you know what i'm saying no one was looking like looking at that before dragon ball z like it's crazy yeah, nah, when you really think about it, let's get into it. Like, time skips? Bro, like, obviously, I think there have been animes before Dragon Ball that have had time skips. Mm. I can't name them just because I'm not an old head like that. Yeah. I mean, compared to some of these other people yeah. who are streaming on TikTok, <laughs> they looking at us like, yo, they 20 what? <laughs> <laughs> but when you really think about it, how many anime can you really say popularized a time skip like Dragon Ball did? Right. Like, from okay. taking a character from a child for hundreds of episodes. Yeah into a full-grown adult mm. and then doing it again yeah. and still keep going strong. Yeah. I, like, I can't name one from that generation at least. Like, it's, <laughs> like he, they, he really had that, that, that trope just locked down. You feel yeah. me? Like, he just figured it out. And it, then it became something that we needed so much so that other creators did the same. Yeah. Like Kishimoto did the same. Mm. Um, even Bleach, um, Bleach, he did the same. Oda. Oda. Oda, Oda did the same. Oda did the same. Like every every one of your goats, this is their goat. This is the formula, bro. This is the cheat code. You feel me? Like he he did it. You feel me? Gotcha, like, gotcha, bro. I just it's it's so crazy. And I, there's there's so many other like so many other tropes that we could talk about that mm -hmm. Oda had a part of. You know what I mean? Yeah, transformations, bro. Transformations. When you the Super Saiyan transformation changed the game. Yeah, for sure. I, what transformation are we really talking about if we're not talking about Super Saiyan? Like, it's always going to go back to Super Saiyan. Exactly. And then every, and then there's so many other, like, animes or bits of medium that their transformations are just Super Saiyan. Have you ever seen Sonic X as a kid? Remember yeah. that? <laughs> when they made Golden Sonic? Yeah. That's just Super Saiyan. Literally Super Saiyan. That's just Super Saiyan. Bro, what other super what other transformations that we have like are just literally just right off off of Super Saiyan? I Talk mean, to me. even like uh the 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 ancient demon form of Yusuke mm -hmm. in uh Yu Yu Hakusho, show, that's basically Super it's Saiyan. Super Saiyan. They said there's something primal inside of you that's gonna come out <laughs> and make your hair longer and spike it. Come on, bro. You just had to slick back before that, bro. Like that's major facts. And also we gotta talk about the tournaments, bro. Oh, the tournaments, the tournament come on, like from from the first series in Dragon ball like the the martial arts tournaments bro like that was crazy it's their bread and butter and and that was inspired from like kung fu movies mm -hmm. you know he was a big like kung fu head like back in the days like mm -hmm. he, he took so many aspects of film and like culture and bled it into anime that's major facts you know yeah because he was also big like jackie chan fan yeah and back then like in the 80s into like the 90s was when jackie chan was like really popping like overseas and China was just mass producing his films. It was him. And Toriyama definitely took influence off of that. And, like, there's, I think there's even a character based off of, like, even Bruce Lee, I think. Yeah. In his, uh, in Dragon Ball, like the early Dragon Balls. I think he has a character based off of Jackie Chan as well. I'd have to look that up. I feel but... like Master Roshi is Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> He's just Jackie Chan with, like, a perversion problem. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, and I mean, mm -hmm. like, and that's the thing about, like, like, you know, also just, like, character influence, like, like I think that Dragon Ball Z was one of the first anime that I saw that truly had like 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 uh what's the word I'm looking for like pop culture social commentary bled into mm -hmm. the anime. Bro had Bubbles the monkey. That's the same monkey that's uh the, from the Michael Jackson joint. I forgot the monkey. Remember I forgot Michael really? Jackson's mon monkey. Literally inspired. He said it like it was inspired by Michael Jackson's monkey. Like like bro was bleeding culture into anime which is also a culture now like yeah like like i think that's so far the crossover to do that is beautiful yeah it's like one of those things where it's like art imitates life like he was definitely able to you utilize the things that happen in life within his art to imitate um to imitate yeah. nah that's fire like i i love it akira toriyama he's made several accomplishments and he's he's the goat like jake old mentioned earlier he's your goat's goat he's your goat's goat. you hear that akil 
He's Gage's goat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's also Isayama's goat, probably too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, even though right. Isayama didn't really know. He didn't okay, do we we don't have to talk about Isayama. <laughs> this isn't a key, this isn't a point where we're trashing Isayama. Yeah. We are bigging up Toriyama. We're bigging up Toriyama, but you know, like mm-hmm. Akira Toriyama, un- Uncle Akira. That's that's how I'm gonna refer to him from now on. He is he is our uncle, the big dog. Yes, sir. You feel me? And yeah, you know, if you guys haven't realized already. Who we are, we are keeping it nine thousand. Let that sit for a second. Yeah, if you remember, it's over nine thousand. That's where we got the name of the pod from. Exactly. So you know, Bro. like, where would we be without Toriyama for real? Like, it's it's so crazy. Yeah, and it's just cool to see like how his his art literally went past the medium that it developed from. Mm-hmm. It started as an a manga, then got turned into an anime, then got turned into a video game. You mm-hmm. mentioned live action movies, which. I mean, we don't have to mention it, but it's okay. You know, he <laughs> he's was okay. A- Get your bag, Akira. He was actually on that though, which was crazy. And he literally was like, "These Hollywood people are not listening to me. <laughs> they this is." He literally said, "This is not a Dragon Ball series, <laughs> even though I was on it. It's not a part of it. They yeah. they didn't listen to me." It was like how the Avatar creators walked away from that one. They were just like, he was like, "Okay." Don't worry about me on this one. I'll, <laughs> I'll make GT. I'll make something else. Fact, just give me, I'll help out with GT. Just give me my 15, 20% royalty if you guys make money. But they they literally, they didn't make money at all. Yeah. They were in a negative for the entire project. Yeah. Like, that's and, so crazy. And the main actor who played Goku never starred in anything ever again. <laughs> Blackballed. Like, yeah. Blackballed. Deservingly so. Um, but also, let's think about it too. Like the amount of times we just hear about Dragon Ball just in general outside of anime. Oh, yeah. Bro, music. Mm-hmm. I- Meg the Stallion, Dragon Ball references, Childish mm-hmm. Gambino, Dragon Ball references, Wu Tang, I think even has Dragon Ball references. Like generationally, we're mm-hmm. talking about from the nineties to the to early now. to the mid two thousands to the later two thousands till now. Mm-hmm. That's wild, bro. How many shows can you say really do that? Yeah. Like right? it's like anime and Donald Trump. Yeah, <laughs> like no, it's like Dragon Ball, Dra- Donald Trump. You'll hear the, their names in so many hip hop songs. Yeah, 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 all the time. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Nah, nah Dra- Dragon Ball really was it, bro. Like yeah. Akira Toriyama really is that guy. So I think throughout his legacy and all of his accomplishments, I think that truly, I don't think most of the world has understood his impact. And it's mm-hmm. sad to say that you get your flowers when you pass. Yeah, right. But I think truly, like. I've never seen so many people speak about this man, bro, about about an anime creator in their passing, bro. Like he is truly a cultural goat and a cultural icon and a legend. And I, I honestly think that we didn't appreciate him enough while he was here. Yeah, and especially us, because we've definitely talked a lot of trash about Dragon Ball. I'm gonna be honest with you, because we've talked about like how the story wasn't in terms of like the density of the story it just wasn't as fulfilling as other stories that we get now mm-hmm. but we definitely and i'm going to do a better job of trying to remember like it's because of the story that he wrote back then that we can get the stories that we do now yeah and well, like okay. art improves people are able to take things that worked in the past and like better upon it mm-hmm. and so he definitely laid the foundation for everything that we have now Facts. um but i got a question for you what's good what's your earliest memory of dragon ball because remember mm-hmm. when we started watching anime it wasn't streaming so we weren't starting from episode one yeah we just started from whatever episode tsunami gave it gave yeah. us and then we just watched it from week by week afterwards yeah so what's the earliest memory that you got of dragon ball so what's crazy is i have two memories and there mm-hmm. are two different timelines and i'm trying to remember which one came first Mm -hmm. but i actually watched the first episode of dragon ball z dragon ball first okay like that was my first like episode Mm -hmm. was the original like they found goku and then goku met up with alma like i watched that on Mm -hmm. like on tv but also somewhere within that timeline my father bought me the original dragon ball budokai probably was after because that's probably why i wanted it yeah but that gave me the because I actually didn't watch Dragon Ball Z at that time. I only yeah. knew Dragon Ball. So the Budokai series introduced me to Dragon Ball Z yeah, yeah, as yeah. a series, and then I was like, "Wait, so Goku had a he got older?" Like I was like, I was so confused. Yeah, yeah. But then I had to watch the Dragon Ball Z anime to chime in on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, bro? My earliest memory of Dragon Ball, and I don't know why this is the earliest memory. But I remember it was the original Dragon Ball, and I think I lived in Denver at the time, too. It was the original Dragon Ball. They summoned the great dragon Shenra to make a w- wish, 
but I think it was like Emperor Pilaf that summoned it. Mm. By the way, this is like so long ago. This is like the depths of my brain, so I might have stuff stuff wrong. Forgive me. Yeah, it's all good. And he was about to wish for something, and then Oolong the pig jumped out of nowhere and wished for a pair of panties instead. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> that's, that was crazy. That's the earliest memory I have of Dragon Ball. And for some reason, since I was a child, that has just been stuck in my head ever since. Bro, been locked in since. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to wish for those too. Right. <laughs> Well, we got a kill behind the scenes. A kill. What's your earliest memory of Dragon Ball? There are two that stand out, similarly to Jake Paul, Budokai. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing that game, the it was the the mini game or the event where you had to rotate the analog sticks mm-hmm. to do oh. the special beam cannon on mm-hmm. on oh, Raditz yeah, yeah, and Goku. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That shit was the hard or that was the hardest yeah, thing yeah. ever. That that just that was crazy to me being able to do that that whole game series got me was a huge part in getting me into dragon ball long term but also tsunami watching and just mostly all anime that came on tsunami yu yu Hakusho, show obviously dragon ball z but watching the cell saga not the cell saga the planet namek saga mm-hmm. oh, uh, after yeah. school the, that was probably yes. i don't know exactly which episodes i remember seeing first yeah. but just seeing that kid gohan my in the in the sane armor yes, sir. toughest toughest stuff ever uh yeah those are my, my two moments of yeah. remembering dragon ball nah y'all um, mentioned the video games bro i remember being a kid playing budokai Te- kaichi 3 yeah I remember I played that game so long that I I forgot to eat and drink water. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I remember I started from the beginning of the game and then ended up towards the end of the game within the same day. And I was like, I just remember looking up from the screen just thinking, yo, I haven't consumed anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. Nah, it's crazy. But um, I think we should close off on this, bro. Yeah. Um, overall with akira toriyama's creation dragon ball and just him as a person in general Mm -hmm. what does he mean to you like what does he and his creations mean to you um i think overall when it comes to akira toriyama to me i think that akira Akira toriyama and his legacy to me uh really was just true like inspiration in terms of creating at your purest form yeah you know like i think that with the era that Akira Toriyama came out in, he was able to create without the noise of the World Wide Web and the media to influence his creation. Nice. And I think that thus so, he was able to curate his magnum opus without any outside interaction. You know, you can tell in like a GT and further super series where there was more media kind of like mm-hmm. and like worldwide culture influence. Yeah. But I think that as a original like like uh, like uh, inkling in his mind, the Dragon Ball series was birthed one way and the series up until at least like the Cell Saga mm-hmm. or like, you know, um, the Boo Saga mm-hmm. was truly his creation. And he was able to build that out. Like, I think that's fire. Like, just, just to be able to build a world from your idea is crazy. So I truly thank him for following through and uh, just showing us that, yo, you can do it. And that, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. Cook what you want to cook. Yeah. The world going to take it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the cream rises to the top, and Dragon Ball was the cream that rises to the top in that um, situation. For me, I think I mentioned this earlier, it's just Dragon Ball is the foundation, Mm -hmm. bro. Like, your biggest anime, your biggest shonen anime, the ones that make it to the top kind of follow Dragon Ball's formula. You take a kid, (laughs) you remove him away from his parents, you give him a couple of friends, you travel into the world, you have fights, you have heart, you have moments of loss, you have Mm -hmm. all of these things that like make up a a story in a way that like we all can gravitate towards. And everybody's doing the same thing, but they're remixing it with their own sauce. Yeah, And it just works so well. And Akira Toriyama definitely started that foundation. Not to say like he's the first one who ever did it, but he did it in such a way that others could learn and like improve upon what he's done. It was best to do it. Best in class, bro. Facts. A goat for real. Like really a goat. Legend for real. No, major facts. What about you, Akil? I think for me, obviously I didn't know the man, but Toriyama was a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, like a kind of like a, a guiding light, and I think it's most apparent in one of the characters she made. I mentioned Kid Gohan, uh, or just really the character of Gohan. Um, as a kid, I saw a lot of myself in Gohan, mm-hmm. just his shyness, his like reluctance to uh, fight, but also having a lot of potential mm-hmm. and a lot of smarts, and really kind of choosing the path that he wanted to go on. He ended up when he had the choice, choosing to still study, even though he became one of the strongest Z fighters. I guess Goku and Vegeta are the strongest, but he is as strong as them uh, in in some capacity. But just seeing that 
arc of his of his growth his overcoming lack of confidence and just growing into a man who like he is proud to be today uh mm-hmm. is something that even today i still see myself uh, mm-hmm. a lot of myself in gohan or a lot of gohan in me um and i think toriyama uh has created a bunch of characters whether it's goku vegeta piccolo has created characters that people can identify with and even though people say that Dragon Ball Z doesn't have a lot of meaning. It's a lot of screaming and just fighting. Yeah. I think the people that love Dragon Ball Z really love, love it for the characters and for the reasons that I, that I talked about. Facts. What are, What are we looking like on time, Thank you. Uh We have like 15, 20 minutes left. Uh, wh- ben, what have we recorded? Like how many how minutes are we in? Uh, we are like uh, 24 minutes. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. We have more than enough time to get to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right now we're going to transition. But before we transition, I got a quick question for you, Jake. Well, what's good? Top five Dragon Ball characters right now. Uh, Trunks, Go to Goku. Go to Go- Gohan, Vegeta. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love Yajirobe. I think he's one of my favorite characters. He's just comic relief. Dude, go to almost got you shot in the face. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. <laughs> I was about to say Gohan too in my head. Yeah. All right. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, but what about you? Oh, 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 oh Piccolo, Pan, um, Cor- Oolong, uh, po- Mr. Popo, and uh, 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 Raditz. Okay. Sick. And you had a camera phone. <laughs> you thought you thought she was good. <laughs> Top five Dragon Ball characters right now. Uh, go on. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Vegito. Uh huh. Vegito. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Vegito. Okay. Vegito. Go with that one. Okay. Uh, Piccolo and then Pan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sick. Okay. Cool. 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 Damn, I think I might have to edit mine. I look like the only coon saying Mr. Popo. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Um, we are going to transition right now, though. Um, again, big ups and big shout out to Akira Toriyama. Yes, sir. You created one of the most world defining, culturally like shifting series ever created. Nice. And like all love and respect is due to you. R.I.P. Yo, so um, for those who aren't familiar with Keeping 9000, what we do is we just talk about like regular day to day anime stuff, but in a different creative way. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're talking about anime characters that are the worst, but we're going to defend them. Mm. We're going to defend and justify their actions. Mm-hmm. This is defending anime's worst. Oh. The way this is going to work is J. Cole has three characters. I have three characters. We each have to defend and justify their actions. Um, and then within the process of defending and justifying their actions, the person opposite to us, for me it's J. Cole, for J. Cole it's me, gets to ask them questions that they have to use to continue to f- defend the characters that they're defending. So just to kick it off for y'all real quick, um, we'll start off with my character. I'm going with, I'm going with Hisoka, bro. You're gonna start off with Hisoka. I'm going with Hisoka. Great, great. All right. Start. Great I'm start. not saying that Hisoka is a good person by any stretch of the imagination. You feel me? Yeah. He is a bad guy. He's bad. But he has a goal, and you know what his goal is? To fight the strongest. His goal is to fight the strongest characters out there. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, you're not wrong. Throughout the whole series, he's just looking for the strongest. Yeah. When he sees a weak character, he smokes them easily and just gets past them. That's not fun to him. What's mm. fun to him is finding the people that are like, you know, the top of the peak or have the potential to be the, at the top of the peak. Mm. And if you want those people with potential to, you know, rise to their highest potential, you got to give them something to fight towards. Mm. And that thing that he gave them to fight towards was himself. Maybe he did it in the worst ways. He was pretty questionable. But at the end of the day, my man Sisoka is just trying to fight the strongest and try to create the strongest to fight. Mm. What you got for me, J. Well? All right. So, I mean, we could start off with that. You want to talk about the strongest and mm-hmm. grooming the strongest and um, fighting uh, the nobody strongest. Said right? you know, nobody said grooming. So nobody let's, said grooming. So, let's talk about Hisoka yeah. from... Hunter, Hunter. Hunter, Hunter. Shout out to Gashi. He Soka. Yes, he's in pursuit of the strongest. Him Soka. But why is he Soka so like fixated mm-hmm. on grooming and fighting a child? Not just any child, Gone Freaks. Because it's not like Gone's dad is not dead. Mm hmm. He's still alive. Mm. Why is he going after this child when he can just go for the main 
meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. why are you trying to break? Like, like, so you want to like build your victory and then like build your build your fight to get your victory? Why don't you just get your victory from his pops? What's like he's not the, it's like his soap is not the strongest right now. If his pops is still around, I got a question for you. Who's the future? Doesn't matter. Who's the future? Who's now? Who is the future? Isoka could be the future. I asked you a question. Just ask you a question. Who's the future? Future. I mean, everybody. <laughs> I believe that children are the future, right? That's the song. Okay. So if they're the future, they're going to they're gonna be the next strongest generation. Isoka's not worried about Gon's dad. He's like, that man could get smoked whenever. You know what I mean? And I got another question for you. Yeah. Gon and Kilu would know who Isoka is. Yeah. What? Bro, when we grew up together, yeah, you knew there were some characters around the block that, when we were told, "Yo, don't hang out with them," right? Yeah. What did we do when we were told not to hang out with them? We hung out with them. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you did. <laughs> maybe you did. I didn't hang out with them. Yeah. Hisoka and he, Gon and Kilua know who the hell Hisoka is. Yeah. Why are you moving in that man's direction? You know who he is. Maybe get out of his way so he can do his weird stuff off to the side. No, but you have to understand the type of characters that Gon and Killua are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're also in pursuit of becoming the strongest hunters they could be. You know what I'm saying? Whatever their hunter goals and are. And so they're going to put themselves in front of a creep? Of course. It's not a creep. Like, they're going to put themselves in front of a creep? I'm but, just saying. But this is, your, this is your creep. He, you're discerning. Hisoka is who Hisoka is. So if I know who this man is, I'm gonna tell my kids, yo, don't don't hang around him. I don't care what's over there. If he's moving right, you move left. Make sure you're in in separate directions. But how can these children avoid Hisoka when he is also in active pursuit of them? It's not like it's not like Hisoka's doing his own thing. He's be he and was, in Heaven's Arena. He was doing his own thing for a second. He was doing his own thing. He has going to kill didn't need to be there. He has his little side quest because there's still people he needs to conquer, like Crollo, right? Mm -hmm. But he, his main meal is is gone. I don't. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. I think Hisoka is a person who is terribly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mentally disturbed. And oh, we're pulling this card now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a okay. card of insanity. Okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I can't keep defending it. <laughs> Who's your character? <laughs> oh, oh man. Okay. Uh, I'll go with. Uh, we'll start off with. Uh, the, you know, I think the perfect character that relates to Hisoka is Orochimaru. Mm -hmm. So, guys, Orochimaru, one of the legendary signings. <laughs> he is not a good person. Not either. this man pulling up his resume. But his name rings bells. My boy has been through. Uh, I think one or two two ninja wars, the mm -hmm. second and third great ninja war, and he ain't, he ain't get bodied. Mm -hmm. He helped the Leaf Village. He helped Tsunade and Jiraiya. He helped everybody. He even he tried to stop Tsunade's younger brother from dying, and little bro did not listen to him. But that's a whole nother conversation. But Orochimaru is here for the village, but he's also here for a pursuit of power and knowledge and growth for the culture of shinobi he does whatever he can to gain growth mm -hmm. for the shinobi culture whether that is experimenting on people developing and understanding different kk kk genkai <laughs> kkk <laughs> kk genkai or you know what i'm saying like wanting to change your body here and there and find out what <laughs> immortality is you know but he has done That's it and he has he has done it for many reasons I think that he is a necessary evil in the Naruto world to advance society beyond where it's at right now. Okay, a necessary evil to um, advance society beyond where it's at now. Mm. Let's talk about the things that he's done, the evil thing that things that he's done. Okay, this man literally murdered two different leaders of two different villages. He murdered the fourth Kazakage right. and took his place. Okay. And then he murdered the third Hokage, the beloved, even though he also did some questionable things, you know. Beloved third Hokage. Okay, we can but talk about the this. The beloved third Hokage. We saw the amount of people who showed up to his funeral, all right? People yeah. loved him. Okay. How are you going to justify those acts of terror? What do you mean? It's not, it's not like he assassinated an entire clan and put them to extinction and only left two people around. The third Hokage did that, though. So you think Oroch Orochimaru did it for the Uchiha's, or you think he did it out of his own ability to gain something out of it? I think everybody that had to, you know, unfortunately pass 
in Orochimaru's uh, wake. Unfortunately passed. No, uh, they were murdered. And, and, they were murdered. <laughs> and Orochimaru's wake was part of the cause. The cause to pursue power and the cause to pursue culture. It's just they had What to be, culture was he pursuing? The culture of, like, ninja genetics and ninja society. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're in tune with Boruto, but <laughs> Orochimaru you know is... He he is the reason why hopefully society will be able to keep up with whatever is coming at the world. Mm-hmm. And people can say, oh, Orochimaru killed the third Hokage. Orochimaru killed the fourth Hokage. Kazekage. Kazekage. Orochimaru is going to be the reason why humans survive, period. So we had to lose a few but he's, people. He's also the reason why many humans have died. And that leads me on to my second question. We're not going to talk about... We were talking about Hisoka and his pursuit of children. We're not going to talk about Orochimaru and his pursuit of children, biting boy necks, putting r- weird random like tattoos on their body. Hey, man, he didn't just do it to boys, first off. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, we want to say his boys. Anko, Anko got crazy. it too. You feel me? So that that's all I got to say. Anko <laughs> got it too. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Let's do one more character each. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god hold up hold up hold up who i got next yo first um to keep in honor of akira akira toriyama i'm gonna go with frieza shout out the king you got it and you got him on the ch- on the chest yeah i'm a little biased today it's not all right <laughs> <laughs> hello monkeys <laughs> <laughs> yeah so frieza starting off of that with the hello monkeys the frieza is a being that came from a what planet did he come from Planet, planet Frieza, ice, Planet Freeze, whatever. Yeah, Planet Refrigerator. Yeah, Frieza, Frieza is a villain that is the main villain, one of the main villains of Dragon Ball Z. Popped up and like just started taking over everything. Literal world conqueror. He mo- moves from planet to planet and just takes people out of the game. Mm. Frieza is a straight up killer, and his whole goal is just like interplanetary domination. Okay. At the end of the day, if that's his goal, he's gonna make himself do whatever he can to make that goal achieved you feel mm, me interplanet domination interplanet domination. domination yeah you know he what that sounds like hmm. what does it sound like i keep going keep talking i got you <laughs> it sound like it sound a little bit like manifest destiny I'm i don't just, know about that man i'm just saying when you're one of the strongest beings in the universe and you see that everything's moving in the right direction when it's moving in your direction you're going to want to keep that direction going right I'm not saying that he's right. I'm just saying if these are moves that you're going to make if you don't if you're the top dog in the game. Mm. Just saying. That's just what it is. So we're justifying manifest destiny and the ability to conquer other people and races and planets. In anime. In anime. Not in real life. In, but in, in anime. anime. We're, we're justifying that. In anime. So we're saying that it's okay for Frieza to just blow up whole entire planets that took billions of years to develop. So this one person who's not even 100 years old can destroy ecosystems. Like, it's just, it's just cool. Like, everybody should just be okay with it. I'm just saying, all I'm saying is... If your planet wasn't so blow upable, maybe you would have still had a planet. If your planet deserved to stay around, it would have been around. So, so survival of the fittest, you're saying? Survival of the fittest. You think Freeze is the fittest? Yeah. Well, until Goku came along. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know. You don't follow the same rules as Goku. You know that. He don't follow the rules the same rules as anybody. <laughs> Frieza <laughs> makes up his old rules. Frieza, made, he, Frieza be changing his rules daily. He be like, you know what? Actually, I can work with these monkeys, and that's the problem. Mm-hmm. How can you be under Frieza's lead if you can't even trust this man to lead you properly? He's going to betray you, like how he betrayed the Saiyans. You know what Frieza is. He's a you monster. Know, yeah, you know what you're getting into. So He's a again, monster. again, just like the same situation with Hisoka. If you know what you're dealing with, why are you making deals with this man? Mm. Try harder and fight stronger. You know, we're, let's let's go back to the manifest destiny because I'm building up Frieza's rap cage right now. So mm-hmm. not only is Frieza um, leaning towards a certain uh, group of people that I, that I I've under, like I understood exist in our world too, but stop connecting it to our world. We're talking about anime. You know, <laughs> Frieza. We're talking about anime. Frieza. Fam enslaved particularly one group of now people. Now we're going to use the S word, okay. You know, he enslaved one <laughs> group of people. We're going to use the S word. And cool. what does he call them, guys? Huh? What does Frieza call this group of people? Monkeys. Why did he say that? <laughs> Every day of his life. I'm just going to start capping? What is it? I don't remember him calling it nobody that. And so, <gasps> what translation you got? Frieza's always enslaving these people, but then it's just so funny that Frieza... He had his pinnacle form, mm-hmm. and then he saw these 
quote unquote Saiyans mm -hmm. reached their pinnacle and he got inspired mm -hmm. by his own slaves. But you know what he called I mean they weren't his slaves anymore. But you know what he called his final form? Black Frieza. Black Frieza. Saiyans aren't black. They're in monkey form, they're pretty Saints black. Saints aren't bro. black. They're pretty black in their monkey whoa, form. Whoa, whoa, that says more about you than it does about Frieza. <laughs> that says way more about you than it does about Frieza. Cancel this man. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> <coughs> All right, <laughs> that's it for Frieza. Let's do your last one. All right, sick. Uh, we can go. Uh, we can go Sakuna. All right, bring it down. All right, guys. Justify his actions. The man, the myth, the legend himself, the conqueror, the conqueror, hailing from the Heian era, which is around a thousand some years ago. For the people who do not know history, mm -hmm. Sukuna was the king of honestly probably japan i don't know about the world mm -hmm. but he was the king of japan in that era yeah and he ruled it not even with an iron fist he just ruled it with an endless pursuit of power and strength just like a lot of all of the other characters mm -hmm. that we've talked about he wanted to become and frankly became the biggest bad there is and you know in the past People didn't know why Sukuna wanted to become so big and bad. Yeah. Why did he become the king of curses, mm. right? But Sukuna decided, hey, I think that my pursuit of power is so strong that this generation can't even handle what I have for them. So you know what? I'm going to do society and humanity a favor. I'm going to work with uh, Noritoshi Kamo, uh, Kenjaku, right? And I'm going to distribute my body into 20 different fingers and i'm gonna let the world experience me again and whatever time they, they're ready i thought that was just the only way that they can like seal him he sealed himself did he that's how that's how really Is that what happened? oh damn he sealed himself because he was just he was just that bored in the era that he was living he was like i need to take a nap come on he's the goat <laughs> yeah but what are you justifying I'm justifying that he did it because society wasn't ready for him yet. Okay, well, I mean, but can you justify the atrocities that he's committed? For sure. You walk up to Sukuna and you want to fight Sukuna, mm -hmm. and Sukuna's going to give you the fair one. Oh, so you're saying that he's fair with his fighting. He's so the fair. only people that he kills are people that decided that they wanted to come up and fight him. Beyond, beyond the no, 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 no. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. The only, Is that what you're saying? Yes. The only direct people who will get killed by direct, directly killed by Sukuna. I mean, everybody who got killed was pretty direct. Are who challenge him? There okay. may have been some casualties in the wake <laughs> some of, of, Saku <laughs> of Sukuna's battling these other people, but. If it wasn't for the people challenging Sukuna in that moment, everybody wouldn't have died. Some casualties. You mentioned some casualties. We're going to have to talk about it, bro. Let's talk about it. I got a, a little city in Japan to talk to you about. Okay. A city is called Shibuya. Okay. There were people who lived in that city who did not challenge Sukuna to any fight. Yeah. That did not know this man existed. Yeah. Going about their regular days, nights. Yeah. They were going about their regular night. And then all of a sudden, they didn't exist anymore. Yeah. Imagine, imagine you're just in a building doing your job because, you know, you work in a society that works you arduously yeah. day and to night. And then you wake up and you're in heaven and God's like, yo, what happened to you? And you're just like, I don't know. I was just around. Yeah. And then you peer into your body on the earth and you just see where you used to work. Okay. And just buildings are rubble okay. for miles upon miles upon miles. Yeah. And then you realize that you undeservingly died as just a casual, a little casually casualty, as you said, to the crimes of a man called Shub um, Sukuna. How hey, do you justify that? How, do you, how do you justify all those indirect murders that he committed? Who decided to challenge Sukuna in that moment? Not the people who got murdered. Well, they should have never challenged Sukuna. Sukuna tried to contain himself in his vessel, right? It wasn't even his body. That wasn't Sukuna's body. That was Yuji's body. Mm -hmm. He tried to contain himself in his vessel to, you know, not destroy everything. He destroyed a small patch of what could have been worse, right? And he did that to destroy the people who were fighting him. And guaranteed, he did. He accomplished what he needed to do. He won all his fights. Well, he may have accomplished what he needed to do, but he didn't need to put that much effort, extra and credit in. Also... 
So Kuna gave y'all a thousand years to advance as a society. <laughs> what? It's humans' fault they died. You guys should have become sorcerers. So who, who's the who's the other big homie who's deep on this? Uh, deep uh, Kenjaku. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the other bro's name? Uh, that body he's in. Oh, uh, Tengen. Uh, not Tengen. Um, black hair. Oh, uh, Ghetto. Ghetto. You know, Ghetto said it. We gotta get rid of the fodder. Basically, Sakuna said, "All right, y'all fodder for real." He did what he had to do. And you know what? Sakuna is doing this for the future of jujitsu, right? If it wasn't the biggest bad Sakuna, jujitsu would never advance further than a point it is. Ah, uh, so what you're saying is, I understand what you're saying. You're saying all the humans in jujitsu kaizen deserve to die. Understood. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay, that was defending anime's worst. Um, for those who are just tuning into that, basically the whole point of that game is we're just going to take terrible people and try our best to defend their actions. It's not us agreeing with them. It's just us trying to make, you Speak know, the justification. <laughs> so, I still bust yeah. on what? <laughs> yeah. Cole agrees with everything that Orochimaru did. Every <laughs> single thing. Just remember, it wasn't just boys. <laughs> Hey, man, the Leaf Village wouldn't be around if it wasn't for that action. That's all I got to say, bro. He is impactful. That is crazy. Funny as hell, though. So, Jaquette, what we got next? Sign us out. Yo, guys. So, that was the episode. We are keeping it 9,000. I really hope that you enjoyed our episode. I hope that you enjoy our podcast. For those who are new here, Mm -hmm. there are 151 episodes in audio and about like 30 or 40 video uh, episodes <laughs> in video online on YouTube for you to chime into. So if you want to catch up with Keeping It 9000, understand us more as a collective, as well as, you know, just engage in the conversation and uh, critique of anime culture, please check out our previous episodes everywhere. Uh, Keep It in 9000 streams on all RSS feeds. Um, we have our YouTube. If you want to see us in the flesh, in full length form, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are trying to grow and build our YouTube channel so that we can take Keeping It 9000 from what it is today to the stars. We are trying to leave a legacy, hopefully as crucial to the anime culture as Akira Toriyama. Trying to go over 9000. We're trying to keep it over 9000, so please subscribe to our YouTube and help us uh, on that journey. And if you fall off, hey man... You know, hit that unsubscribe button because we want the people listening to listen, right? Last but not least, guys, we have uh, we we are on social media at Keep It in Nine Thousand, particularly on Instagram. If you want to see our clips as they drop weekly on the on the hour, day by day, please follow us at Keep It in Nine Thousand on Instagram. And last last but not least, guys, if you really love Keep It in Nine Thousand, you want to talk to me, you want to talk to Kev, you want to talk to Kill, you want to talk to the homies who love anime, we have a Discord for our 9000 gang. It's in our bio. Join our Discord, join our community, and please be a part of the culture. We want to... Nah, it sounds kind of weird to say, but we want to embrace y'all more. Not on some Orochimaru shit, but <laughs> we want we want to truly, you know, like hang no out thanks. with y'all. And we want to make Keeping the 9000 a true brand. Brands are not built from just us. It's from the opinions and thoughts of you guys as a community. So please. Join us on everything we do and follow along on the journey. Yeah. And for those who are already doing that, we appreciate the hell out of y'all because we are having dope conversations with you. And seriously, the only way the way that we found out that Akira passed was because somebody threw that onto the Keeping It 9000 Discord. And so, yeah, definitely hop on because you get information like that really early, quicker than like most do, just because like we're a group of people that care about anime and the stuff that's going on in the culture. That's a fact. So, guys, thank you again for always keeping it 9,000 with us. We will always keep it 9,000 with you. And we'll catch you guys on next week's episode. Peace. Peace. Goodbye. It's over 9,000!